late fashion photographer Herb Ritz once claimed that Claudia Schiffer was impossible to photograph badly. The striking German blonde was one of the fashion world's big six supermodels in the 1990s. At the height of her success in 1997, she launched her book, Claudia Schiffer Memories, at the luxury London department store, Harrods. When you have your place on top, nobody can take it away from you because you will have already made your name. According to Forbes magazine, Claudia has made a fortune out of her beauty. In 2007, the world's most famous monitor of wealth and power estimated her net worth at around 55 million US dollars. Born in the small village of Rheinberg, West Germany in 1970, Claudia has two brothers and one sister. Her father, Heinz, was a lawyer and the family was wealthy, a fact that Claudia later confessed had caused jealousy amongst her peers. Her 5 foot 11 height was not an asset at school, where she was shy and introverted and keen to avoid being noticed. A good student, she became fluent in English and French, a skill which would come to serve her well in her international career. Upon completing school, her first plan was to follow her father into the law. But at the age of 17, that plan went out of the window after Michelle Laverton, the head of the Metropolitan Model Agency, spotted her in a nightclub in Dusseldorf. The rest, as they say, is history. Not long after her first fashion shoot, she appeared on the cover of French Elle. But it was when Karl Lagerfeld chose her as the new face of Chanel that Claudia's place in the fashion firmament was assured. In 2008, she was in Berlin to present a Lifetime Achievement Award to the designer who'd set her on the path to superstardom. In the early 1990s, she became the face of Guess Jeans and began appearing regularly on top magazine covers in the US and Europe, including Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Cosmopolitan and Time magazine. She was also the first model to grace the cover of Vanity Fair, Rolling Stone, The New York Times and People magazine. She had a contract with cosmetics giant Revlon and furthered her catwalk career by working with design houses like Versace, Jill Sander, Dolce & Gabbana and Valentino. Claudia's close working relationships turned into lifelong friendships with a number of the world's most influential designers. At one of Valentino's last shows in 2007, she joined Donatella Versace, Giorgio Armani and Karl Lagerfeld to celebrate the maestro's achievements after 45 years in the fashion industry. However, it wasn't all hearts and flowers back in the 90s. As the hype and fascination surrounding the supermodels reached a climax, designers began complaining about the fees some of the top names were being paid. In 1994, Claudia and a select list of her colleagues like Naomi Campbell and Carla Bruni could demand $10,000 a show. For a week's appearance at a fashion event, such as Milan, they could clear as much as $100,000. Modeling became one of the few industries where women could make more money than men, and some designers made their disapproval known labeling supermodels vampires for the outrageous fees they commanded. However, Claudia and her peers defended their right to their fees, noting that modeling is first and foremost about sales. Is it still fair that they should be paid so much less than you? We are paid because of what we sell. We are not paid because of what we are. Compared to what we sell, we're paid little. Compared to what we are, we're paid a lot. Men's are paid because of what they sell. They're not going to sell so many suits, they're not going to sell any creams, so they're not paid as much as we are. Not surprisingly, given the money involved, the world of the supermodel is highly competitive. Some would say cutthroat. In 1996, Claudia lost the lucrative Chanel contract to newcomer Stella Tennant. Karl Lagerfeld's alleged justification for dropping Claudia was his belief that Stella was more in tune with modern fashion trends. Thankfully for the 26-year-old Claudia, other designers disagreed, and she continued to find her services in high demand. One of her biggest fans was the colorblind and controversial photographer Helmut Newton. 
While still in her 20s, Claudia was already an elder stateswoman in an industry notorious for hiring very young girls. Aware that every inch of her face and figure was under scrutiny from women and girls the world over, she voiced her concern about the 1990s trend for heroin chic, as displayed in stick-thin models like Kate Moss. Claudia feared that ordinary women would attempt to emulate this unhealthy look and put themselves at the risk of major health problems. And I don't like very much either that the fashion trend right now is supposed to be, the, the women or the girls are supposed to be very, very thin, which could be very dangerous to all the young women and girls that are reading all the fashion magazines and following every fashion trend. So it, I think it's dangerous because if they, if they copy everything, they might copy to, to also wanting to be so thin, which, which can lead into anorexia, and that's, that's very dangerous. Her courage in speaking out about worrying trends in the industry didn't protect her from her own brushes with controversy. At the height of her career, she caused a stir as a result of her contract with sexy lingerie manufacturer Victoria's Secret, known for its risque catwalk shows and racy adverts. In 1995, a number of primetime US television stations refused to air one particular commercial, which involved Claudia writhing around in scanty lingerie to a soundtrack of jungle drums. The commercial had been shot in Paris. Claudia was surprised by the furor sparked by the ad, which the networks had declared too provocative. She simply saw the campaign as offering her a chance to tell a story that brought out the qualities of the product. The model's massive international profile has resulted in some unusual requests for public appearances. In 1995, Russian President Boris Yeltsin invited Claudia to Moscow to appear in a fashion show for the Our Home is Russia campaign. And she wasn't the only celebrity to accept Yeltsin's invitation. Only the month before, MC Hammer and British musician Glenn Hughes had performed to audiences thrilled to be getting a taste of the West. The campaign was designed to help the president win the youth vote in an upcoming election. In 1996, Claudia was in Shanghai to help promote a new catalogue by mail-order giant the Otto Versand Group. Following Vidal Sassoon's outstanding success in Hong Kong, many designers felt the Chinese market was going to be very lucrative. Huge crowds gathered to catch a glimpse of the famous European beauty. I have always dreamed about coming to China one time and I've had incredible imaginations of the city and of the people and I was very, very curious. A few years later, she went to Lebanon for a fashion show and was shown around the presidential palace by Miss Lebanon, Joel Bolock, before meeting the president, Elias Rawi. He presented her with a piece of clothing she had probably never worn before, a blue abaya, a traditional Lebanese robe. Claudia has been canny in cashing in on her high public profile by expanding her business portfolio. Following in the footsteps of acting superstars Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Bruce Willis, who combined forces to start up Planet Hollywood, Claudia sat down with fellow supermodels Naomi Campbell and Elle McPherson and came up with a chain of restaurants called The Fashion Café. The first café was opened in New York's famous Rockefeller Center in early 1995 and was an immediate hit. The walls were lined with fashion and photographs and a catwalk in the café gave budding models a chance to strut their stuff. Later that same year, the women asked Christy Turlington to join the team. By that time, plans were already on the table for another opening in London's Piccadilly Circus. Two years later, Claudia took time out from her catwalk work to welcome the crowds into the newest branch of the fashion cafe. This is our first entry into basically Latin America. You know, we wanted to start with Mexico and we're going to go to other countries as well and South America as well. She also went on to launch her book and released the first of what would become four fitness videos. 
Although she confessed she never suffered from cellulite, she admitted that she found it hard to get motivated around exercise and couldn't just eat what she wanted. The video was designed to offer people a simple and easy way to exercise and provide an antidote to the many more complicated regimes on the market. Well, everybody is very different and um, I certainly am one of, uh, I have to work out also in order to have a fit body. I'm not one of those people that uh, can eat french fries every day and then to still look the great the same way and, and don't have to exercise ever. I mean, these people do exist, especially in my industry, but I'm not that way. When Pepsi switched to blue cans in their branding battle against Coca-Cola, they employed the German supermodel to spread the news. She was in good company, with fellow supermodel Cindy Crawford and tennis star Andre Agassi also promoting the brand shift. What I like very much about the image of Pepsi, it's very cool, it's hip, it's young. Claudia has also appeared in a number of films and television shows. Although she has yet to put in anything more substantial than a cameo appearance. In 2004, she was a guest at the Berlin Golden Camera Awards, where her role was to present the award for Best International Actor. Before the event, she let the press into her little secret and spoke of her excitement about the night. Jack Nicholson. I'm going to give him a prize tonight, together with Thomas Gottschalk. And I'm looking forward to it because I think he is great. In the late 1990s, French car company Citroën used Claudia to promote a car they were exporting to South America. In Argentina for the launch, she reassured her fans that the rumors surrounding her imminent retirement were exaggerated. No, it's not true. No, no es cierto. I, uh, I was in Milan two weeks ago and I did a press conference and I think that uh, the journalists have not understood me. I think it was a translation problem. It's not true. I love working for Citroën and I have many other um, projects. I love being a spokesperson for L'Oreal as well. And I do a lot of modeling still. I do, of course, I do also movies and other things, but I really love my work overall and there, I'm definitely not stopping. Aside from her substantial work commitments, she continued to devote time and energy to a number of select charity causes. In 1995, she signed an anti-fur petition, Models for Compassion, for the animal liberation group, PETA. Alongside Kate Moss, Linda Evangelista, Cindy Crawford and Naomi Campbell, she pledged to stop wearing fur, both on the catwalk and in real life. She and Naomi joined forces for another good cause the following year. Along with fellow model Karen Mulder, they agreed to let US toy maker Hasbro design a Barbie doll in their likenesses, on the proviso that a portion of the sale of each doll would go to International Red Cross. It's a great idea, especially being a model, I think, you know, sometimes you kind of feel like a doll, you know, people dress you up, they dress, take your clothes off, they do your hair, they do your makeup, and when I was little, I was playing with my dolls the same way, so somewhere it's, it's, it's fun, you know, you feel like a little girl again. Naomi commented on the fickle nature of modeling contracts, something Claudia was all too familiar with. I hope they go very well. I hope they go to children that need them and to people that like them, and I hope they last for a long time, longer than we do. Years later, Claudia was on hand to help put pressure on the German government to play its part in assisting the world's poor. The Germany Live 8 concert was expecting an audience of 100,000 to crowd around the landmark victory column. With international artists Green Day, Brian Wilson and Roxy Music included in the lineup. The concert was one of 10 free concerts organized by Bob Geldof on the eve of the G8 summit. And Claudia was invited to speak to the crowd. Alongside all of her other charitable commitments, Claudia has been a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador since 1997. In 2005, she found herself in very illustrious company when she added her soundbike to a public service announcement about the impact of HIV AIDS on children. Shot in London, the ad launched a five-year global campaign, Unite for Children, Unite Against AIDS.
The impact of AIDS on children is devastating. Millions of children are infected with HIV and thousands see their parents die of AIDS every single day. Children are missing medical treatment because of AIDS. She also signed up as part of a glitzy lineup for Fashion Rocks. The extravagant event is run annually in aid of the Prince's Trust, a charity run by British princes William and Harry. It brings leading lights from fashion and music together, pairing artists with designers. The 2007 event teamed Donatella Versace up with rebel rock star Iggy Pop, Armani with Alicia Keys, Lily Allen with Chanel, and band Razor Lights with Burberry. Other guests included Dame Shirley Bassey and top-selling band The Sugar Cubes. Claudia was there to present Chanel. And on the way into the event, the press asked if she missed being in the limelight. No, I don't miss the catwalk at all. I was asked if I wanted to walk the catwalk tonight, but I said no, because I don't really like doing it anymore, and I prefer to present Chanel and Lily Allen. The concert, held in London's Royal Albert Hall, was hosted by Hollywood royalty Uma Thurman and Samuel L. Jackson. The German model felt the mix of music and fashion made a lot of sense. I do, I do believe, and, and, and you can see that, by the way, when you go to see a fashion show, how many, for example, singers and rock stars and so on are sitting in the front row because they all want to see and, and get inspired by a fashion show and, and vice versa. I'm sure a designer gets inspired by a, 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 a performer that he really likes. So it, that's why tonight it works really well. It's logical. The same year she showed her deep commitment to environmental issues. She spoke at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland to an audience more familiar with her as a style icon than as an environmental activist. The subject of her speech was the lack of ecological rationalism within the fashion industry. Wouldn't it be great if, for example, um, all the packaging of, of all the products that are on the market would be all eco-friendly? What a huge difference that would make. Or if someone would invent clothing that actually didn't need to be washed very much in hot water and at a much lower degree, all the energy you could be saving there. Attending the conference with rock star and campaigner Bono, she told delegates that even small changes could make all the difference. If a <clears throat> company had a big building with lots of lights that were on day and night, and they changed them to motion detectors, so the last person leaves the building, all the lights are switched off. Huge energy uh, saver. And then the everyday person could be thinking, well, okay, well, me at home, I could change my light bulbs to a longer lasting one, uh, which is a, an energy saver. And this is how I'm having. Um, that would be a great step forward. Claudia's romantic track record has been much more steady than many of her peers. Back in 1994, she made the headlines after hooking up with famous illusionist and millionaire David Copperfield. The pair met when she attended one of his shows and he invited her on stage to take part in his flying illusion. During their five-year relationship, Claudia would often join him on stage as his assistant. David would proceed to use her in tricks, including sawing her in half. However, Claudia continued to fend off questions about a marriage. You know, when you get engaged and you just, you just tell each other, that's it, that we know, we love each other, that's it, we, no more questions. It doesn't matter, we don't have no hurry now to to go immediately and get married just so we can prove that it's real. By the end of the millennium, however, their very public relationship was over, with both of them citing conflicting work schedules as the cause of the split. Claudia dated British millionaire and playboy Tim Jeffries before meeting and falling in love with film producer Matthew Vaughan. After announcing their engagement, a bizarre rumour emerged that rather than presenting Claudia with a diamond ring, Matthew had given her a tortoise. Whether or not the rumour was true, the couple made it up the aisle in May 2002. The reception was held at the couple's £5 million mansion, Coldham Hall, in Suffolk. The ceremony itself was held in a small church, and locals suggested why the famous pair had chosen to settle in their district. They're very, very nice, very quiet, and I think they have the opportunity to just 
be themselves and people aren't intrusive here they'll let you get on with your own business and uh, it's just a lovely place to live getting on with their own business was exactly what the couple had in mind Casper Matthew was born in January 2003 and a daughter Clementine de Vere Drummond in 2004 a third child is due in mid-2010 and in between looking after their young family Claudia enjoys horse riding, painting, playing tennis and skiing while Matthew continues his work in the film industry. Since producing the hit British heist film Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels which earned him £9 million, he's branched out into directing. Sometimes you're in denial about what you want to do in life and I sort of fell into producing and then got, I wasn't creatively satisfied by producing and um, just waiting for the moment to, to start having a go directing and, and it, it sort of circumstances took over very quickly and I was lucky that it worked out. In 2004 he made the successful transition into directing with another heist caper, Layer Cake, starring Bond hero Daniel Craig. More recently, he directed the children's fantasy film Stardust. Meanwhile, Claudia hasn't completely abandoned public life. She recently combined her love of tennis with her love of dressing up and joined a select pre-Wimbledon function in London, organised by Richard Branson. Now she no longer has to rely on her looks to make her fortune, she can enjoy the party just like everyone else. And thanks to her long association with the creme de la creme of the fashion industry and close friendships with the world's top designers, she'll never be short of a nice frock for that special occasion. Yes, I'm very lucky because I'm a model and I have worked in the fashion industry for a really long time. I, you know, I know all the designers and it's really easy for me just to call them up and say, can you please send over what you got? And the thing is, they know my sizes, they know exactly what looks good on me, what doesn't and what I like. So uh, that's fairly easy and then I just need to get the accessories together, whether it's handbags or jewellery or things like this. But it's, you know, basically everything, everyone sends everything to you and all you need to do is just try it on and figure out what you like. It's a tough job, but somebody has to do it.